Everybody knows exposition is bad. Everybody is wrong. Okay, first of all, what is exposition? Like so many things in writing for screens, there is no single authorized definition. This is mine. Exposition is conveying information to the audience. When you look at it that way, a lot of writing for screens is figuring out how to do exposition. There is information to be conveyed in just about every scene. The fascinating thing about that is the audience wants information. Moment to moment, the experience of watching something on the screen is one of actively hungering for information. What's the plan? What's going to go wrong? Who's that person? What's in the box? Exposition can be a kick for the audience. So then why does it get the stink eye? Because there is some bad exposition out there, people. Clumsy, confusing, undramatic. So let's talk about why exposition goes bad. Bad exposition happens when the writer is thinking, I need to tell the audience, instead of this character needs to tell that character. It may show up as forcing information into dialogue where it doesn't belong. Like, remember when we were kids back in that terrible neighborhood and you wanted to go fishing? They grew up together. They both know what the neighborhood was like. There's no reason for this person to say that except the writer is trying to tell the audience something. A lot of writers look at exposition like medicine or homework and they just try and get it over with as quickly as possible. So they just dump a big pile of raw information, usually in its own scene, nothing else is happening, like, well, it's boring, what are you gonna do? Let's just let it be boring. If you make a legendary film, maybe you can get away with this. And often, as a side effect in dumping, you get overload, which is giving the audience way too much information at one time, which provokes the directors to tell the actors to say it really fast, as if somehow that's gonna make it better. Walk and talks are where they try to cover exposition with long steady cam shots of the characters walking while they talk, which has devolved into having the camera run around in a circle while people have a conversation. The theory being, let's give them something interesting to look at because talking is bad. Camera movement is a beautiful thing, but if you're writing a scene where you think I can get away with this dialogue because they're walking, stop. Write a scene that can play with interesting and dramatic things that are happening, and you won't have to hire all those extras. All right, sorry. It's easy to take shots. Let's get positive. Let's get practical. How do we fix bad exposition? People convey information all the time. They make reports, they give orders, they explain situations to friends, they debate, they plan, they confess, they gossip, they criticize. Exposition works when someone is trying to get something or make something happen. Someone involved ought to feel something about this information. Give someone a personal need to tell, or need to know, or make someone not want to tell. Find a situation where this information is an obstacle to someone's goal, or a vehicle for them to get it. You have so little time in a script. Stop and figure out the exact powerful phrase you want the audience to hear. Don't jam in too much at once. Try not to build a scene where the only thing that's happening is exposition. Sometimes, just give your character something else to do. Not walking. Actually doing something. People talk at work, or over a meal, or cooking a meal, or playing cards, chopping wood, doing a drug deal. The fact that one person is asking another for information does not make it inherently dramatic. It still has to be a scene. If you're thinking, Gee, the audience might be confused by something. I ought to write a few lines to explain it. Stop. Go back. Instead of explaining it, make the confusing thing not confusing. Watch out for any moment where somebody is telling someone something they already know or 
something that we already saw in another scene. Dialogue is not the only way to convey information. Have characters doing research or watching the news, voiceover, flashbacks, diaries, letters, ghosts, ironic educational film strips. There is a weird terror among teachers and people in the industry of scenes where characters just give us the information, but those scenes can be great. The explainer scene is often a powerful turning point. Have the explainer be a player in the story, trying to warn or threaten or encourage or empower. Make it poetic or emotional or funny. Make it a moment of insight. Make it a set piece, a kick, a big elaborate speech. Give it to a character with a really unique way of talking. Have it come from someone unexpected or seemingly impossible. Make it hard to get. Break it into pieces so it's like putting together a puzzle or following a trail of breadcrumbs through several scenes. Make it fun, make it cool, make it bizarre, make it something to remember. Try this. Start looking for good exposition. Watch something that you love and try and see all the places that they're conveying information and how they do it. Just to get you started, here are some masterpieces of exposition. I'll list them in the description. Twelve Angry Men. Life of Pi. JFK. I am not endorsing the politics or the conspiracy theory. I'm just saying this is a festival of exposition. It's a Wonderful Life. Half of this movie is an explainer scene with God as the explainer. Jacob's Ladder has two explainers. These are movies with explainers as major characters in the story. Sometimes the explainer is the main character. And one movie which is all about trying to get an explanation. Any script by Paddy Chayefsky, Aaron Sorkin, or Quentin Tarantino, whether you like their style or not, they are making exposition interesting. Okay, that's enough for now. Go write something. But before you do, talk to me in the comments. Tell me your favorite piece of exposition. Tell me the worst you've ever seen. Ask me questions. Tell me what you want to talk about. If you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. And if you want to work with me, go to writingforscreens.com. Until next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.